And dear all, welcome back to uh, NephroTube Online Nephrology Lectures. In this lecture, I will talk about adult minimal change disease. I will highlight the most recent uh, KDIGO 2021 clinical practice guideline for the management of glomerular disease. The PowerPoint of all NephroTube lectures is available at our website nephrotube.com and all the recorded videos are available at our uh, YouTube channel NephroTube. And you can follow us on our page, the Facebook page, uh, group, and Twitter account for more activities. Starting by the pathogenesis of uh, minimal change disease. In primary minimal change disease, there is abnormal activity of the immune system, lymphocytes, especially the T lymphocytes, with the development and the presence of uh, unidentified permeability factor, which act uh, which acts on the skeleton of the podocytes, distracting it, causing effacement of the podocytes and causing increased permeability of the podocytes to protein. Minimal change in disease may be secondary, as all of other forms of glomerulonephritis may be secondary, that is, and it is important uh, to try to find the secondary cause, because secondary glomerulonephritis. Uh, has a better prognosis than uh, the primary one. In minimal change in disease in adults, you have to search for a secondary cause. Yes, in, in children, it is usually primary, but in adults, you have uh, to make an effort to find if there is a secondary cause to treat it. Uh, a long list for uh, secondary causes of minimal change in disease. Maybe the most important are allergy and a Hodgkin disease from the malignancies. Also, non steroidal non inflammatory drugs may be important and uh, immunizations. So, these are uh, may be the most important secondary uh, causes of minimal change in disease, especially in adults. Okay, before going through the treatment approach, we must mention some definitions. Regarding the response of the patient, the first is complete remission. We say that the patient is in complete remission when there is a total reduction of proteinuria to less than 0.3 gram per day, with a stable serum creatinine and normal serum albumin more than 3.5 gram per deciliter. Regarding partial remission, partial remission is the reduction of proteinuria, but this time is between 0.3 to 3.5 gram per deciliter and a decrease more than 50% from baseline. Regarding a relapse, a relapse is defined when there is proteinuria more than 3.5 gram per day after complete remission had been achieved. Okay, what about steroid resistance? Steroid resist resistant minimal change in disease is defined as persistence of proteinuria more than 3.5 gram per day with less than 15% reduction from the, the, ba the baseline despite of prednisolone, prednisone with maximal dose for the maximal duration which is more than 16 weeks. Frequently relapsing minimal change in disease is defined as two or more relapses per month or four or more relapses uh, per 12 months. And finally, steroid dependent minimal change disease is defined as a relapse occurring during or within two weeks of completing glucocorticoid therapy. So let's start now the approach for the management of minimal change disease. I will start by induction of remission. The drug of choice in cases of minimal change in disease is corticosteroid. So if the patient has no contraindication to corticosteroid, the patient will receive corticosteroids for a duration with at least four weeks and for a maximum period of 16 weeks. If the patient entered the remission, then a gradual glucocorticoid tablet should start two weeks after remission. So you have to complete the dose that get the patient in remission for two weeks more before tapering glucocorticoids. The gradual taper of 
group corticoids will be on 24 weeks. If there is any contraindication for corticosteroids, so we have to use alternatives to corticosteroids in minimal change of disease, and in order they are cyclophosphamide and the calcineurine inhibitors. Both of them have uh, some evidence to be used in uh, minimal change of disease. With a little evidence, microphenolate mofetil or sodium microphenolate with reduced dose of group corticoids and finally with a little little evidence is the use of rituximab in the induction of remission of minimal change of disease. If the patient is in frequent relapser, so you have to treat him similarly to the initial presentation. As you treated him at the initial presentation with lower and less prolonged doses of glucorticoids to avoid corticosteroid toxicity. What if the patient has frequent relapses or steroid dependent? You have to get the patient in remission with glucocorticoids. But beside glucocorticoids, you will use other alternatives to prevent the relapse of the disease. What are the other alternatives that you will use with glucocorticoids in frequent relapse and steroid dependent patients? If there is no previous cyclophosphamide exposure and no patient preference, so the best to be used in patients who are frequent relapses or steroid dependent is cyclophosphamide. But if there is a previous cyclophosphamide exposure or if the patient wishes to avoid cyclophosphamide, so the evidence goes to rituximab, CNI, and finally mycophenolate mofetil or sodium mycophenolate. An important point that was mentioned by KDU guidelines regarding the choice of therapy for frequent relapse and steroid dependent minimal change disease, that in general, there are no differences between the medications used in these situations, patient's choice, local availability, and the costs need to be considered. The final category, what if the patient is steroid resistance from the start? And we defined before steroid resistance that the patient is not responding to glucocorticoids that is used for uh, 16 weeks. So if the patient is steroid resistant, you will treat it similar to glucocorticoid refractory focal segmental glomerulosis, and you may need to reevaluate the patient for other causes, especially FSGS, plus or minus redoing the uh, renal biopsy. What about the doses? First, regarding the dose of corticosteroids in the induction of remission, it is recommended to use the dose of 1 mg per kilogram per day maximum. 80 mg per day or 2 mg per kilogram every other day with a maximum dose of 120 every other day. For at least, as we said, for at least or for a minimum of, of uh, 4 weeks and for a maximum of 16 weeks as tolerated. And as we said, after remission, we will taper over at least 24 weeks, but don't forget that before tapering, you have to complete the dose that get the patient in remission for two weeks before starting in tapering of the dose of, cort of uh, corticosteroids. Regarding other alternatives to uh, corticosteroids for induction of remission if corticosteroids is contraindicated, oral, cycle, oral cyclophosphamide can be used in a dose of 2 to 2.5 mg per kilogram per day for eight weeks, cyclosporin in a dose of three to five milligram per kilogram per day in two divided doses for one to two years, and tacrolimus in a dose of 0.05 to 0.1 milligram per kilogram per day in divided doses also for one to two years. So what about the frequent relapser or steroid dependent patients? As we said, 
at the start you have to uh, induce remission with glucocorticoids and you'll use another uh, drug with glucocorticoids to prevent the relapse of the case. If there is no previous cyclophosphamide exposure and there is no patient preference, so the preferred uh, drug is oral cyclophosphamide that can be used in a dose of 2 to 2.5 mg per kilogram per day, but this time for a longer duration for about 8 to 12 weeks. 12 weeks may be associated with less relapse in steroid dependent patients. So if you use oral cyclophosphamide for induction of remission from the start, you, you will use it only for eight weeks. But if you will use it for frequent relapsing and steroid dependent patients, it's better to use it for a longer period, 12 weeks, as it is associated with less relapse. But what about if the patient had a previous cyclophosphamide exposure or the patient wishes to avoid cyclophosphamide so you have to use other alternatives. You can use cyclophosphamide in a dose of 3 to uh, 5 mg per kilogram per day in divided doses for 1 to 2 years or tacrolimus in a dose of 0.05 to 0.1 mg per kilogram per day in divided doses also for 1 to 2 years. And it is suggested to have a trough level of cyclosporin between 150 and 200 nanogram per ml and for tacrolimus to be between 4 to 7 nanogram per ml. We said in frequent relapse and steroid dependent, you will start glucocorticoids to induce remission and start the alternative at the same time. Once there is withdrawal of glucocorticoids or after withdrawal of glucocorticoids, you have to try to reduce calcium urine dose if possible. The suggested dose for cyclosporin is less than 3 mg per kilogram per day and for tacrolimus to be less than 0.05 mg per kilogram per day to limit the exposure of the patient to these drugs. But don't try to totally taper calcium urine inhibitors, cyclosporin or tacrolimus, before one year. The patient must continue these drugs at least for one year to prevent relapse and it is preferred to be tabered slowly and it is preferred to be continued to two years. You can also use rituximab and we all know the available arrangements for rituximab for induction of remission and also it can be used if there is relapse in a lower doses. And finally the mycophenolic acid analogues either mycophenolate mofetil or sodium mycophenolate mycophenolate mofetil in a dose of one gram twice daily and sodium mycophenolate in a dose of 720 milligram twice daily can be used in cases of frequent relapse and steroid dependent but for a minimum of one year of therapy if possible to prevent relapse the final point that i want to mention in my lecture is about prognosis. What is the prognosis of minimal change in disease in adults? Long-term kidney survival is excellent in treatment responsive patients, but prognosis is less certain for patients who don't respond to the medications. I want to thank you all for watching this lecture till the end. Don't forget to visit our website, YouTube channel, and to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. See you soon.